everyone. I'm Tony. And I'm Alex. And, and we're Inside, Inside Information. Information. Today we'll be discussing Lorax made in 2012. Tell me about it, Alex. So as you said, the Lorax was made on March 2nd, actually, of 2012. At a 70.8 million budget and 349 million in yeah, profit. Really? Yeah, I thought it was actually That's kind quite... of impressive. Like, from, for an animated film making that much. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, you don't really expect it when you see the Lorax. For it to have made three hundred and forty nine million, yeah, and I honestly, know. I'm impressed. The movie by about that. trees is very interesting. Uh, uh, trees and made. capitalism, so yeah, technically, yeah. yeah I so I mean, uh, pretty much that's what it was based off of because it, Dr. Seuss made it with that idea in mind. He wanted to make it sort of sort of advocate against capitalism, and so that's why the book was actually okay. It was made in 1971 and it was banned, I think, in 1989. Well, why? Because of the capitalism. Oh yeah, the, and the, yeah, the propaganda. Come on, no, me. I know, but like America's not usually known for banning Psst. things that don't, you know. Psst. Anyways, it was the, directed you know, by Chris Renaud. 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 Press. Chris Renaud. Okay, Chris yeah, Renaud. Yeah, it was yeah, directed by Chris Renaud. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it actually has an amazing cast of Ed Helms, uh, Zac Efron, Taylor Swift, mm. Danny DeVito is in there too. Yeah, and, and Betty, Betty White. White. Oh, Betty White. Betty Wyatt. She was the golden girl. Peace. Anyway, yeah, uh, a big name cast for whatever reason. It actually does have a great cast. I mean, bro, that's probably where the majority of the budget went. No, actually, the animation is great too. So. Yeah, animation is pretty good. Um, it was the, this movie is obviously based off a of Dr. Seuss book made in the 1971. I just said that, Tony. Can I not elaborate on no. what you said? Okay, just go. Can, just I, go. can I not elaborate? Yeah. As I was saying, you can't elaborate. The book came out in 1971, and it was a big hit. It spawned an animated um, f a short that was made, I, I believe, in the 70s as well. Also a video game. Yeah, exactly. And so um, that the book had a major influence throughout pop culture, not just film, but also in, as you said, video games and mm -hmm. uh, mini films. And so to start off, the film begins in this beautiful town of Needville. Needville? Th Needville. I didn't know it's, Needville. It's yeah. Needville. You know, where everything's artificial mm -hmm. and the balloons are like um, trees and stuff. So it's a very it's a very nice beginning showing how society works and how trees are not prevalent. Would throughout. you really call that a very nice beginning? Oh, uh, yeah. It's, uh, it shows the city. Everyone's singing. Happy everyone's happy. Beginning, happy. But I don't know if it's a very nice. O'Hare is a zillionaire. O'Hare air. <laughs> I mean. Aloysius O'Hare. Yeah, that guy. You know, I actually like that guy. A lot of people don't like his character. I really like Why do you like his character? No, I mean. I mean, I'll get into it a little later into okay, why, fine. but like for now, um, I believe let he was misunderstood go, and just took advantage of the situation he was put in. Anyway, um, so there's this kid named uh, Ted. Yeah, Ted. Mm -hmm. Ted. And he was on uh, his moped or whatever that big wheeled motorized machine is called. And so he was it's riding on a moped. To, I mean, I mean uh, that thing is not a moped. That thing is like a huge Yeah, but whatever. Wheel. It's, it's and so then he, he believed that there's something out there outside the walls of the city and so then he wanted to investigate and so then he explored um the the secrets um inside the walls and so then which caught the attention of aloysius o'hare which is you know this kind of makes him a villain in a way because like he threatens him mm -hmm. and to, to he stop is him. the villain definitely. yeah I no mean, he is the antagonist no obviously but i wouldn't say he's a how is he I, not a villain? I, I would argue he's not a villain. I think it's a... He's the antagonist, sure. So he wants to prevent nature from coming back in order to keep his money. I'll elaborate I'll elaborate on happy. that a little later. Okay, don't worry. And he's so then, uh, uh, Ted managed to get out of the city... Um, what's it called? The outskirts? The city walls. Yeah, the outskirts mm -hmm. of the city. And so oh, then, that was a pretty interesting scene. Yeah, I, I and, love that. And, 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 and the outside is all ugly, all... All dead all withered and so then he was able to find after um riding around searching for what i believe was something i'm not i the don't remember the house he found. no but he didn't wasn't searching for it he was just no, he exploring. wasn't searching for but it but he found he the house accidentally that. and so that's where he meant the that's where he the met the onceler and so then that's where he asked the onceler to tell him the stories of when he was um a young handsome lad at first the onceler really didn't he didn't want to he didn't want to he sort of banished him and kicked him out repeatedly and yeah. with all kinds of weird contraptions and everything yeah. but then he actually let him stay he didn't let him see his face but yeah. he let him stay and so he told him the story just like in the book think. yeah this yeah. movie is very even though a lot of the parts are not in the book like all these subplots with his love interest audrey which um, I didn't mention, but oh, he, yeah. he really likes, uh, Ted really likes her. And stuff, she's she interested seems much in older. nature and she's interested in trees and everything. Yeah, exactly. So that's what she wants to do is she yeah. paints trees on a wall too. Uh -huh. and, and Granny so, Norma. 
Oh I, yeah, I like, I like that character. Yeah, Granny with Roma. the Jello that was made of different vegetables. Nah, bro, that's the mom. Oh yeah, no, that no, was the her Jello. Too. Yeah, different vegetables. Yeah, exactly. I that. And so then, um, he found the monster, and the monster began telling his stories from back then. I'm assuming it was pre 1980, because he mentioned Donkey Kong and stuff. Oh yeah, so probably. That's probably like in the seventies where uh, this took place, and so then, I mean it is definitely in the seventies since the book was also based in the seventies. Yeah, exactly. So I'm figuring that's why, but yeah. it's probably like it's the story probably started in the beginning of the seventies or late sixties, and then ended in like very early eighties or late seventies. Yeah. But anyway, uh, he began telling a story how he he wanted to explore um, and wanted to make a good invention so he can impress his family who was very hard on him. And yeah. so then he ex- he went out and then he found the th- the trees, uh, are they called the 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 thneed is the product but the trees the the truffula trees truffula trees yeah the truffula um, trees he found those and then but he began first he found a different land yeah he found land for a bunch of different a, creatures and of course the the bears and stuff the we fish fed marshmallows too. and yeah. the uh, the birds I don't know uh, yeah the birds the, those uh, goose things. <laughs> and how I've, they were all happy that he was there. They were all singing and dancing. And yeah, everything. this this movie has, I I think a, a good like um I don't know if you could say soundtrack Sense. or like musical number or whatever musical number. Yeah. I think that's more so because yeah. they it's not really like singing and everything that much. Yeah. Well, I mean, it no, is. it is singing, it but is like it's definitely. not like real songs but or it's anything. Not, yeah, you know, by so I really appreciate that film. Yeah, so and I I actually like the songs, like especially at the end when O'Hare was singing "Let It Die," "Let, let It Die." die. Yes, yeah, so that, that was a great song. Yeah, you were singing that yesterday. I remember I, yeah, that, Tony. You are, he we were knows that Lawrence. song by heart. Yes, and yeah, of course, um, as weird. as I was talking about, uh, he started using the trees, um, leaves or fur, whatever, uh, whatever, whatever that thing that, is made out of. It, was, it looked like cotton candy. It did, and but, so then yeah. he made like these things that look like sweaters, but they're multi-use. There are the needs. Oh yeah, and you didn't mention uh, what happened immediately after he cut a tree down. Oh yeah, that's when the most they iconic were... character of the film, mm-hmm. the the self titled film, you know, like the like yeah. the yeah, old yeah, no, 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 I understand you. The Lorax came the Lorax. into the into the the what's that called the, the stump of the tree. Yeah, yeah. And then he put rocks around it to you know give it a little funeral, so, and all the animals were sad, and so to, then the to Lor- memorialize it. Yeah, so exactly. Like a statue, like a mm-hmm. like and, a revered item, right there. Yeah, and the Lorax was pretty much his whole purpose. The entire film was to stop the monster from destroying yep, um, the, the forest. Yeah, the trees. Yes, he elaborated that very much in the book mm-hmm. and in the movie. And so, of course, the monster. Actually, at first, the monster kind of listened. He only cut a few trees, like. Like he no, stopped his he production for a little bit. The the cotton out of the trees, but that was way too much work. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But then eventually, of course, he fell into you know mm. synthesizing the trees and making it into the needs because it became a popular product amongst the people. Yeah, you know, because he they, used to be hated by all the people whenever he'd sell anything. But yeah, with the needs, everyone loved them. Yeah, exactly. So instead of throwing tomatoes at him, they actually praised decided him. to praise him. They extolled him mm-hmm. for his invention, Completely. and of course, he he became corrupt with um you yeah, know fame I mean, and power. I think that happens money. to just about anyone. Well, uh, that's kind of a general statement. But well, I mean, look I at O'Hare too in this film. Yeah, O'Hare Air. Yeah, O'Hare exactly. Air. And so then the ones was there, he also the mayor? No, but I mean, he was like he was like the, the overlord, but like he was like the unofficial one. Yeah, I don't think he was like a mayor or anything. He just he was, he was like the richest person in the world. He was, he was like a, a zillionaire according to the film. Drug cartel type thing. No, owns, well, air cartel could, type thing. An air cartel, yeah, yeah. that owns the whole he, land and everything. Yeah, and exactly. He oversaw it, and so. The once there continued to destroy the trees, and he his his factory started to develop, and he had all these machines that cut down the trees. Mm. That's and that's kind of interesting. I I used to like those machines, like in the really? movie when I saw it with the axe. It's such I thought it was such a genius yeah. invention with the axe thing, the multi axe. Oh, and also the those. iconic song too. Oh yeah, that he sings during that. How bad can I be? I used to love that song. Um, yeah, too, exactly. Too. And he was just you know using his resources. Yeah. I don't condone what he did destroying the forest. He and he's really and he's really not smart for planting seeds after he destroyed the trees because what yeah. people usually do is when they destroy trees they plant seeds so it grows back mm-hmm. so that you know their their yeah, supplies don't run out but he he didn't do it and i'm pretty sure the the, the seeds for for whatever reason take a long time to grow back but like still like you should still try you should still at least yeah. try to plant it yeah but uh what one thing i found interesting about the song too is that he was trying to 
justify what he was doing yeah, by saying that family. any other person would have done it. Yeah, exactly. Oh, and, and his, his family, family too. Always like that. disowning him, but like now they yeah, loved him for his it. Family with that one on to the when yeah. the Lorax actually sees her, he says an iconic line, mm-hmm. "That's a woman." Oh, yeah, that's a woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's very insensitive, yeah. Alex. Anyway, oh, stop it. And so then, um, after the song, of course, all, all like millions of needs were sold internationally the and factory the animals yes, just could, could only the animals of the lorax could only see in this day and like yeah they, exactly they and would just there's like oil there. in the water there was like everything was destroyed it looked exactly like the modern day uh, it, it land to look like when the once was signed the story and so then the last tree was cut down and the lorax was like that's it um it's over and, and he yeah. went back into the sky yeah by grabbing his, his butt by grabbing his butt and pulling himself I, I, up i found that funny <laughs> yeah that was an interesting and way so then everyone abandoned the one sir because he ran out of resources to make the needs and so that would mean and and his family took all his money yeah like it's not like he retired rich like his his mom like took like his millions or billions of dollars and so then he ended up just living in a tiny shack type thing yeah, i wonder how he got life. food in there yeah, I don't really. I mean, Probably they don't like elaborate or something. That. Ooh, that would make sense. But man, the, the guy looks so young when that happened. He looked like what in his thirties, and he, he looks like he's 20s, in his like seventies or eighties now. So it happened like so 50 he years so he ago. lived like well okay no the movie took place in twenty twelve and say it happened like nineteen eighty or eighty one so that would mean thirty years had passed so he would be like sixty as an old man assuming he was thirty. You I'd know. say also the stress and yeah, the stress the and stuff and the loneliness regret, probably like grief, everything that probably son, you know? took a toll on him. Yeah, and he probably didn't that's take why he looks himself. older. Yeah, because he looks like he's in his eighties. Yeah, but like, and so then um, everything was destroyed, and um, that the onceer is how he is modern day. But then he he gave Ted a value lesson. Uh, it was it was something the Lorax said, I believe, or something where it involved. Um, where it involved uh what's what's that saying it's like if someone like you cares a whole awful lot nothing's gonna get better a qu- something like that a oh. quote like that which is a very iconic quote um, and also I, I the Wunsler gave him a seed yeah a seed to plant in the town square so that everyone could see uh actually so, the reason why ted wanted it was because of audrey oh uh, yeah yeah Man, she wanted a tree for her birthday see that subplot is so it's so dumb to me because you know you, you he didn't think? do it for the benefit of society he did it to, no like, but at the end he did mean to do it yeah of course of society but like and so yeah you, know, you mentioned it he used to he had like a dream of marrying her and then showing the tree off to yeah, yeah. Her. no on her birthday oh yeah he would show marriage, the tree off. yeah exactly and she would be all impressed and fall in love with him and everything uh-huh. Uh-huh. i remember that dream he and was then, playing the piano and all but then all this, and, but Aloysius O'Hare became rich all because of the the Wunsler. Mm-hmm. And so then he took advantage of that because he saw people around him were coughing and weren't able to breathe. And so then he, he thought to himself, you know, why don't I sell bottled air just like how he sell bottled water? You know, you so that's criticize pretty much that what genius. With the, you know, with the air. Like, yeah, so he, he became, he, he, whole, he, he monopolized he, the yeah, entire he did. city. <laughs> but like, you got to give him credit. Like, the guy took advantage of the situation guess, and assessed yeah. it by giving air to the people. Nobody had air. I, it's he provided enough, air. But, uh, yeah, so but he. But the, the villainous thing he did was, was to prevent the tree. The, but that's like the one thing I, I could think yeah, of that he did. Yeah, because since there were no trees, there were there was no air. But now that the trees would come back. There yeah, would be air yeah, again. there would be air, and then he would lose his money. Even though he's like a zillionaire, so I don't know why he was so stressed out about that. Now no yeah, one liked him by the end of the film, and so then uh, they took a bulldozer or whatever, and they put a hole in the ground. No, actually, first they had a whole uh, police chase type thingy. Oh, that where they were trying. To, oh, that doesn't matter, bro. That does matter. How does the police chase O'Hare matter? Was it wasn't the police to... chase; it was security. Yeah, security. You know what I mean. There's no police yeah, in that town. Was, uh, <laughs> O'Hare was trying to get the plant from them, yeah. and so they ran with the grandma and Audrey. See, and those subplots don't matter. It's like the, the, it's and so, they it's so ran irrelevant. with the grandma and okay. Aubrey okay. and Ted. You're missing the point of the film. I am still speaking tones. I'm gonna call him tones now. Okay. And so uh it's okay if we exceed the time. <laughs> and so yeah, yeah. They had a whole chase and then uh the town decided that they wanted a tree too. And they had a whole song which Tony was actually singing a yeah, while ago. Musical number of Let It Grow, Let It Grow, but let O'Hare had his one section grow. which was the best part of the song, Let It Die, Let It Die, Let It Shrivel Up and Die. That song that part was I really remember good. that part. That part was good. And, and then that little girl was like no one agrees with you, and the guy's like, "You agree to dirt bag, let it Oh go, yeah, let it. That, was, that was pretty funny. And so then he got sent away, and he probably got murdered because you know he was on a jetpack and he wasn't able to control it yeah. by his own security that he provided money for and the life. 
so like that's like really mean like talk about like loyalty that's yeah, like anti-loyal bro uh -huh. like those security guards like didn't even stand by him once everyone went against him like yeah it's kind of so controversial, honestly. so he's not a bad guy to me he's just like misunderstood i, I guess in a way. i understand what you're saying but i took classify him as a bad guy i mean i mean he's obviously I, a bad guy for trying to prevent you know trees from growing but i understand why he would do that it was greed pretty much it was the same yeah. idea as the one sir so why the the one sir isn't considered a bad guy because of his regret but yeah. i think if o'hare actually saw what would happen he would also be filled with regret so i understand yeah. what you're saying about him not being exactly a one but we'll never know because he probably got killed because yeah. we never saw him after he got launched into the sky so there goes the economy of uh, Sneedville. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, there goes everything. And so then the film ends with the, with the one slur planting trees outside his house. And the Lorax returned. Right. And the one slur was super happy to see and him. And so did the animals come back. Yeah, and the animals began to came back. And, uh, yeah, it's the end of the film. Mm -hmm. What do you think of this um, anti-capitalist um, tree activist? I, honestly, when I was younger, I didn't, I didn't think about, about it as such as, like, in the with capitalism in mind Me so neither. i mean i thought it was just a funny film yeah but i really love it it's it's it's, it's a good film yeah i look i liked it too it's timeless uh, what would you rate it then i give it an 8.5 out of 10 i give it an 8 out of 10 mm -hmm. i think i think the message is pretty good they could have they could have gotten clear. rid of some of the subplots i, I really yeah didn't i think agree it was i mean audrey i think she or audrey, or yeah, audrey whatever. whatever but she sort of I, I don't know i feel like she took away from the film and the whole importance of it too yeah exactly no, but i did like the grandma though yeah and oh hey too so the, so the majority i'd say is pretty good but yeah. audrey seems useless anyway uh thank you for joining us this week on inside information's episode uh we'll see you next week with another one Bye bye